Hey, seventh graders, Mr. Allard again, another one of your flip lessons today. We're working on colony reporter notes number one. So we should have this already cut out and taped in our interactive notebook. There's a front and a back on the first page. All right, so we already have our interactive notebook all set up. Should be on page number 42. Um, so let's go take care of our notes. Should be really simple, straightforward. You fill in the blanks, put them in the blank lines. All right, here we go. Let's go here. Go on life in the colonies. Go here. Oop. Next slide. All right, so colonial food. Um, colonial food was actually probably really plain. Again, you got to take your 2018 glasses off for a second because this wasn't, you know, we didn't eat food because we like to eat food. We ate the food in colonial times that was available. So the number one thing that most colonies had available was some sort of meal using corn. All right, it could be like a corn cake, could be like corn bread, could be kind of like a corn, almost like an oatmeal type thing, or it could be corn just as a side, not too much like corn on the cob or anything like that, but something along those type lines, like a corn pancake even. Um, other vegetables would be, you know, your squash, your carrots, your beans, things like that. Um, meat was obtained through hunting and raising animals. You're not going to the store. There's no meat markets. There's no butchers quite really all that honestly yet you're doing that all in house a lot of this meat is salted so you're going to get a lot of almost kind of like jerky type of material because again there's no refrigeration there's no ways to keep this to prevent spoiling so salt was a big way where you'd cure your meats kind of like a bacon or a jerky to uh keep the, prevent that meat from spoiling uh you were going to eat a lot of stews it was easy to do one pot put everything in let it cook for hours and hours and hours and hours um and it would not spoil you could keep that vessel cooking and things like that and it would keep it sort of fresh and again you, you couldn't refrigerate any leftovers or anything like that there, this, there was no leftover cooking there was no anything like that when it came to colonial food family first of all people married a lot younger um in the colonial time period and typically it was a mutt, it was an older husband to a younger wife. So you might get the wife early 20s on average, but as young as 16, women were starting to marry. And the husband would probably be considerably older than that in their, you know, mid to late 30s at that time because husband or fathers and family members wanted their daughters taken care of. So typically they were married off to an older person who was more established economically, socially. Um, if a husband or wife was to die, that husband or wife was typically quickly remarried, um, especially if you were a wife. Remember, if your husband died, you might lose all that property because in many of the colonies, you could not own your own land and own your own property. Um, and lots of times, if it was a, if it was the husband or if it was the wife that died, you'd have somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 to 12 children to take care of them. That was in this time period, specifically the job of the wife. Now, this was tough to get married in the colonies because there was far more men than women in the colonies. Lots of women were not, you know, looking for livelihood, looking for liberty, looking for land. That, that was a male thing. So most of the colonists were going to be male. Families had many children. You need them work. And many of them often died before adulthood. Today, it's, it's pretty rare. It does happen for a child to be born and not to reach adulthood. During this time period, you know, it was... Uh, it was a 40 per, your chances it was more likely that you were not going to make it into adulthood than you were with um, the death rate for children due to a variety of different circumstances uh, just hygiene food disease all those types of things education um, most children were not um, having a formal education at this time period doesn't mean children weren't getting educated it's meant children weren't going, weren't going to a proper school. Lots of education was happening in the home. Um, if there was education going on in a school, typically that was going to be sending the boys to get an education. Um, and most of the time that was going to be relatively short, particularly if you were living on a farm, because as soon as you could work on the field, you were pretty much pulled out of school to do that. In the, and this also depended, but depending on the colonial region you were in. So if you were in the South, typically only the wealthiest children were receiving education from a tutor. A tutor was legitimately coming to your house. 
there wasn't as many urban areas in the south people weren't living in cities so it was hard to kind of create a public school where people could a bunch of different folks could come whereas in the northern or new england colonies mill counties you had bigger cities you had bigger towns where people could kind of congregate into a public school new england public schools create were created for the sole purpose to speak to teach religion and so students could read the bible again religion was a huge impact of the new england colonies so you're going to see a lot more um, folks uh, being educated for that strict purpose in the middle colonies you're going to see some organized public schools they were kind of a mix of new england and the south you get kind of new york pennsylvania new jersey kind of more new england type stuff maybe a little bit less religion taught you get kind of southern delaware southern pennsylvania you get more of the kind of the wealthier folks getting taught instead of everybody get out of the way here for religion across the board religion is going to be very important throughout the social political and economic life of colonists um, it was kind of the thing that brought everybody together a lot of for a lot of folks it was the reason the, the, the ability to practice their religion freely it was the reason why they were allowed they came to the colonies in the first place um, Puritans up in the New England colonies were required to go to the church by law um, church could last up to five hours on a Sunday if you were not in church or if you were out working or tending your fields or whatever that was a punishable offense taken as a, as a crime and it was it was pretty detrimental to to um, you if, if you were not attending church also during this time period you were getting what is called the first great awakening we talked about the second great awakening with the abolitionists and and things like that we'll review that a little bit later but this was an also time period as, as people came to the colonies and were given that religious freedom, people actually became more religious and and a little bit different teachings. And this kind of uh, went away from the Puritans and was more kind of Quaker inspired. More folks felt that people were equal in God's eyes and everybody had that opportunity to um, to become one of God's children or to be into heaven and, and that sort of um, those sort of things. African-American life. Trying to find a spot for me. There we go. Um, number one thing that people kind of confuzzle with slavery is they think it's only a su southern thing. During colonial time period, slavery existed in all colonies. I'll say that again. Slavery existed in all the colonies. However, it grew the fastest in the south, right? For those geographical reasons we talked about before break. What could you do in the south? big huge farms you needed lots of labor cheap labor doesn't get much cheaper than free slaveries fit that need the triangular trade as we talked about before break brought slaves in the americas from africa many slaves work different jobs all right um, but most of them are going to be field workers and all of them had very little chance to move on this was not a a great situation to be in families were split up mother brothers and sisters were split up People were obviously beaten and whipped, um, and it was there was not a lot of cases for, for African Americans to get their freedom. As the colonies get older, you do get more African American than, colon, than Africans coming right from Africa because the plantation owners liked having folks that were from the Americas who were used to the systems, used to the customs, used to the culture, and things like that. All right, that's going to do it for our flip lesson. Please make sure that you answer all the questions on our Ed Puzzle as well um, to make sure you're getting full credit. That means today's uh, flip lesson is going to be a 10-point flip lesson. All right, have a good one.